Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is a show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Or in this case today, playing mediocre maps. <laughs> um, it's been a long time coming, I haven't put out any level design videos for a while and it's because I haven't really been doing any level design for a while. Uh, another serious case of mappers block I guess and the fact that just so many good games have been coming out recently and just taking up all my free time, so yeah. But uh, I've done a couple of things. You probably notice here. There's a couple of new additions here. Um, I was messing around with the uh, projected texture stuff to see if I could get some cool shadows coming off of these uh, light things. But it's not happening. And there's all kinds of horrible bugs, as you can see. Um, I believe there is a mod floating around which lets you use projected textures. You know, and they actually work, which would be nice. But yeah, I haven't found it, and uh, I'm not too fussed. Now uh, there's a little miscellaneous change here I just want to talk about a bit. Um, so when you open this door here, there's a crowbar inside. And, uh, you'll notice that it kind of sticks around in the world a bit before you pick it up. And uh, that's a deliberate design decision and uh, I'll show you why. I've got some footage from a, a slightly earlier version of the map here. And um, it just felt really strange uh, before I made this change. You You'd walk up to this door, open it, yeah, open it, and uh, you'd pick up the crowbar before you even saw it inside. And uh, this just felt really strange to me. So you notice here, this has gone back to the current version of the map. You look inside, you see it, and then it, it activates and you can pick it up uh, a second or two later. Maybe the delay is a little bit too long, it feels a bit strange, but uh, you know that's tweakable. But it felt even more strange to me, just kind of... Because I imagine most players will just go along this line and open up all the doors you know, simultaneously, just to see if there's anything in there, and they'll just randomly pick up a crowbar while doing so. And, uh, uh, I wanted it to be a bit more considered that I wanted the player to actually look inside and see if there was anything in there. So, getting onto this area again. Again, you've all seen this area a hundred times by now, but uh, there's uh, some little, there's some little visual changes. But the main changes are I've completely redone this whole puzzle here. So you'll notice uh, you can't drop into the top anymore. It's all been sealed off, and uh, I've got rid of the fans uh, and used some just metal kind of blast door things instead. Um, I mean, I think the fans are okay, but I think they'd be better suited for an entire area and using them as some kind of uh, you know larger puzzle device rather than just a little mechanic to stop you getting down a shaft. I'd rather incorporate them into a larger puzzle. And uh, the other main change here is that you've got these two wires you can see here now. And uh, the other reason why I blocked off that area is when the player walks into this room, they didn't really have a goal to start with, uh, which kind of bugged me a bit. So you notice here, I want to change this wall to have like a larger door and have two kind of power buttons. And they're both activated by these wires, which will have buttons on the end of them. I'll talk about more of that in a minute. But um. Yeah, I wanted to give the player a goal when they came out into this room here, so they see the locked door with the two power symbols, which will be off, obviously, when they start the map, and uh, they'll look around, see the two cables going to them, and they'll they'll want to go and follow these cables to see where they go, to turn on whatever it is they're connected to. And, you know, that's the basic gist, and maybe the visuals need to be slightly better, but, again, it's not all totally finished just yet. Um, yeah, a couple of missed changes here, just a general, just kind of basic visual stuff, just filling in some holes to avoid exploiting the puzzles and things like that. And uh, generally, uh, this area is slightly brighter. I've added a couple of extra lights, it was still too dark before. Uh, we've got an entire new area back there, uh, we'll explore around there in a moment. There, there is a new door there as well, which is currently locked. Uh, again, we'll talk about that as I show you the area. Um, this area is basically the same, I've just added obviously the wire going through here and we've got the uh, new doors obviously so I added the button here to kind of get the player to come in here and have a look and there uh, you can see the other button up there with the green light so again if uh, again getting the player to look upwards in the game is a <laughs> nigh on impossible task but uh, if he does look up he'll see the button there now this area has given me some fairly major problems. Um, it, I think it just needs scrapping and redoing really. Uh, basically, in my attempt to get these shadows to look better, 
Um, I was stacking the cars slightly taller so that the shadows would go you know, more onto the walls and ceiling. And uh, in doing so, I realised that uh, when playing the map, you could just jump on top of the cars and jump straight up onto the uh, beams there, and therefore negating the entire puzzle in this area. <laughs> so yeah, you could just jump up here and jump onto the onto the uh, platform, so I'll move them back down again. You, you might even be able to still do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so again, this, this needs some more work to avoid exploiting. And again, this this is like uh, this jumping puzzle wasn't originally planned. So uh, again, you can see you can see why pre-planning areas is so important because you you end up with situations like like this where the area evolves into something new and uh, doesn't support this new thing particularly well. So uh, yeah, we've got our wire going into the uh, vent there, which is a bit strange. I don't really like the wire going into a vent like that, but uh, I. Yeah, unless I just make a hole in the wall with the wire going through, that could work. That might be quite nice, actually. Hmm. <laughs> Having design ideas on the fly while recording, yeah. Um, yeah, may maybe a, a destroyed hole in the wall would look better there. Uh, I can't remember if you guys saw this before, but this, this puzzle's actually complete now. You can walk across and get to the other side and all that good stuff. And of course we've got the, uh, the broken... Uh, emergency light there flashing just to get the player's attention to look up there. Yeah, this this vent, I've never been a fan of it really, it seems a bit crazy. So again this new corridor, um, again I, I say this in a lot of my videos but uh, even with corridors I like to have them with lots of detail but out of the way of the player. So you notice in this corridor it's it's very easy to move around and navigate, but uh, all the detail kind of up above you, so it's not in your way at all, but it still manages to look pretty. Though saying that, the walls are still quite bare in here, it's kind of, it's not really finished yet. A couple of little side areas with some first aids and things like that. A lot of these like hanging first aid kits on the walls, I think that's really, really nice. I forget which mod it was uh, I saw that in, but uh, it's a really great idea to kind of have the items uh, feel like part of the world. So I've been using that a lot. So this is our first station where uh, the player can activate the first wire. Uh, none of that's quite triggered in all yet. And uh, then we've got this room. Uh, I really don't like this. It feels really cramped and small so far. You notice I've got these pillars here, which are which are pretty cool, but they're they're too close together. It makes it really awkward to get around. Uh, I think the whole place needs to be like twice the size. Uh, I do like the lighting, kind of. The, just the one big emergency light there, which you get some cool shadows and things like that. So yeah, it needs some work, and the, there's a little crate puzzle. I wouldn't even call it a puzzle, really. You can just uh, jump on top of the light and grab it. And, unless you're a complete and total derp master like me. <laughs> Can't even do his own jumping puzzle. But yeah, it's just simple stuff. I mean, it's just a case of, you know, just putting a nice little uh, nugget of gameplay in these uh, side areas. So yeah, and then this is the door back into the main room down there, and uh, of course it's locked because we don't want the player to just avoid half the map and uh, activate that wire straight away, so it's locked from that side. And then acts as a shortcut back there if the player misses the uh, activation button or something, so we can just get back there quickly afterwards. It's always a great idea to add uh, shortcuts back to previous areas of the map once the player's completed it, if the layout requires it of course. So uh, I still have connected this area up here with the uh, the second blast door. So now we're up above where we were before, where we see the green button. So this one opens, and uh, now we can jump down and activate the second wire. And uh, again, none of that is actually triggered up yet, so uh, we just have to play make believe. <laughs> but yeah, that that's basically all I've got for you guys, really. Uh, I'm, I'm, I generally like to wait with uh, level design videos so I've got something more to show and talk about, but uh, yeah, I haven't really been doing anything really. So, uh, well, hopefully I had some nuggets of info for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if everything piqued your interest, and uh, I'll answer it as best as I can. I'll see you guys next time.